this year, I'm, I'm showing a series of videos that is uh, called Motherland, and it deals with the idea of uh, diaspora, the idea of migration, people traveling from one country to another, and then it deals with also the Asian diaspora, uh, most because like I come from Malaysia, but ethnically I am Chinese, so there's always this uh, idea of while I was growing up, I was also trying to find this identity of what or where, you know, like in Brazil you have the Japanese in Brazil and there's a big population, so my idea of making the work is also about looking at the, when people travel, they travel in different times and different periods, so they bring with them different stories. So my idea is always about, I'm always interested in stories, in the narratives of lives, of different lives. So this work that I show is a mix between real and fiction, between documentary and fiction. So I work with real people, they, I, I take their real stories, and then I change it, and it becomes a bit fiction. Yeah. Um, it, it's more because I was uh, of where I come from. You know, like in Malaysia, we have uh, Chinese and Indian, and also the Malay population. So these three groups uh, are the main, the big groups in Malaysia. So in my country, traditionally, the, the Chinese, they come from China, and they, they arrive in the whole peninsula in the Southeast Asia region for trading. So they come there to do trade and eventually they live there. Yeah. So also in the Indians, they also come to Malaysia for trading. Just like I think how the Japanese end up in Brazil also. I think for immigration and migration is always about finding a better life. Yeah. Why do we want to live the, from the one place and go to another. I think traditionally it's always about having a better life for the children, better life and better future. Uh, and I think, but now I think it's different because sometimes people travel because they, they have a lover in this place or they follow the girlfriend or the boyfriend. So I think the reasons have changed. Traditionally it's always, but now I think it's still about economic situation. They travel, they, 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 they move because of uh, economic situation, because of war, because of uh, threats, um, because I think basically it's all about security. And then when, in terms of um, like the mass tourism, I think it, it creates a different reason for people to migrate also. Because when you, you are now, we are able to travel more because of the flights are much easier. And then that gives us an opportunity to decide, okay, I think this is a better quality of life. So, so this, somehow the mass tourism creates different reasons for migration also, I think. They're always connected, yeah. In the long term, you'll be maybe like become like Brazil. <laughs> the whole world becomes like Brazil. Where you, where, where, where you don't have, a, you have the identity becomes more private. And then you just have this uh, global space, you know. And, and because now, in different countries, you still have very strong cultural situation. Like, so you move from one country to another. There's different codes of society codes and the way you deal, you do things are different. Um, I think with migration, what it brings is because when people from another place, they also bring with them their own way of doing things. So slowly they will change the local situation depending on which one is more uh, influential. So there's always a two-way exchange. Yeah. So, um, and I think Brazil is the perfect example when you have people from everywhere who come here and eventually the something that comes out from here is, is really from the inside. You know, the Japanese bring something, the Portuguese bring something, the Italians have something, the Germans have something, and then, and then they mix with the local group, and something that comes out is, is a bit of everything. Um, I think globally it's also moving in that direction. Um, probably something that is missing would be 
that you lose something also. Yeah. You get something, of course you lose something else. So these are the things that, that is very much like, uh, like life actually. Yeah. For me, actually the main thing is about, is actually the, the narrative, the, the stories behind. And I find the real or fiction, for me it doesn't matter. Yeah, because I think real dramas are more interesting than some fictional and which is why I, my characters, they are, they are a mix of real facts or real situations so they become a composite character. So let, let's say this person is playing 10 people. So 10 people, the stories of 10 people is put into one person so he's telling the story. So it, it's, it's something, a mix. So sometimes he's playing himself, sometimes he's playing another person's story. So, uh, and that's where I can bring in also ideas about politics, about social, about economics. Um, and for me, like you said, it's, um, I really don't have any, I don't differentiate between documentary or fiction. For me, they are actually the same, yeah. And I think if you know like uh, the work of uh, Pedro Costa, I think his, he also, um, his kind of work is I think something similar in the sense of the sensibility of what we look for. Yeah. Yeah. For me, um, coming to Brazil is always the highlight <laughs> of my career as a, or my artistic. It's, it's like, it's strange that I travel 24 hours, more than 24 hours. But here I feel strangely at home. Here I don't feel that I'm an outsider. Um, it's, I think it's because that here, at least in Sao Paulo, everybody can be Brazilian. Yeah, and that's the thing that I walk the streets. They will ask me for the time. In Braz they think that I'm Brazilian. And I think this, this situation is really special to Sao Paulo. Yeah, so it's something for me, I find, I feel at home halfway around the world. And I don't, I don't even find that in my own country. You know? And that's the, the best thing I, I think about Sao Paulo. Mobility is becoming more, I mean, it's easier in a sense that it's not only physical mobility, but also the through the internet now, you, you are able to see many things. You are able to experience things that you don't have to be physically there. So that uh, itself creates a different way of experiencing things. Um, and also this, so like I said, always you gain something, you lose something. So the, you lose the, the, sometimes you have this kind of a similarity in the values. You know, the, the value system become like a, something flat. Um, so that creates something different also. Because last time you have um, things from a different place becomes more exotic. So maybe now the, the, the idea of the exotic is, is different. Like last time you go to the, in, into the Amazon, it's exotic. Now maybe it's not exotic anymore. Now no, something else is becoming, maybe now if you go back to tradition, that is, that becomes exotic, I don't know. Motherland also deals with uh, memories, actually. It, it, it deals with, eventually, let's say, my idea, is, this series is actually developing. So it's, it's, it deals with, let's say, I, I have a series of where you have Asian faces, but their language is not. Let's say you have a series of Chinese faces, but their mother tongue is different. Like I don't speak Chinese. So you have some, they look Chinese, but they speak German or they speak Portuguese because their, their socialization is not Chinese anymore. They just look Chinese. So that's why then you ask them the idea of the motherland, what is the motherland actually? It's no longer China, you know? Like here, the Japanese, the Japanese here, they are, what is the motherland? It's Brazil, it's the Latino culture.